Okay, y'all, I want to do a playlist for Sister Colleen's, um, her, uh, her channel is Be Still and Know, um, for those who don't know, which I'm sure majority of you do, <laughs> if you're, if you're sub to me and David and, and, uh, Petra and everybody, uh, it's called Scary Verses, and I think she may have already done one already, because it says O2, so I'm assuming that's, this is the second one, and maybe I missed the first one. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in a playlist because I think this is so important for babes in Christ to, um, to understand or even, you know, uh, older Christians that just have been ignorant of the scriptures. And that is very possible because I'm one of them, um, where you've been a Christian for so long and, um, you find out that basically half the crap that you were taught was crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and it was because of the ignorance of the pulpit puppets or the pastors. I call them pulpit puppets um, because they're either being um, manipulated or, um, or excuse me, they are being manipulated um, by the enemy you know, uh, which pretty much they do it on purpose because there are, uh, Satan's, um, ministers of evil, um, and, or they're just ignorant of the scriptures and, uh, stubborn to want to understand the truth, uh, that's possible too, but they could still be saved. And then there's others that just have no clue what the gospel is and, um, just go to church basically for, uh, to talk, <laughs> you know, just to be heard. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a joke. It really is. And I've, I've been in it, out of it now, uh, for many years, so much happier. So, so much happier. I'm not saying all of them. I know some people get pissed off at me for saying, oh, you have a, a, a chip on your shoulder against, uh, against uh, churches and stuff. Um, no, I have a chip on my shoulder against doctrine that is manipulating or being manipulated and uh, taken out of context and basically um, uh, resting the scriptures to keep people in bondage and uh, fear and shame. That's what I have a chip on my shoulder against. And I think we all do, if you really think about it. Because if, if you're a believer who cares about the body of Christ, which I believe we all do, okay, we want to see people get set free. And we want to share that freedom with as many people as we can who will listen. And um, because you know how miserable it is to be in that way of living. You know, um, it's definitely not Christ as your life. Christ as your sanctification. Christ as your, uh, or, you know, renewing your mind. Uh, Christ is your reward. Um, satisfaction. No, it's hi ho, hi ho, get to work. Yo, <laughs> you know, or, or however it goes. I can't remember how it goes. What is it? Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work. I go. There we go. Or it's off to work. We go. And that's basically what it is. It's get to work or okay. Now that you're saved now, now you need to work for those rewards and everything. And, um, if you don't, then you're not going to get the blessing. And, um, you know, this is kind of like what I wanted to talk about uh, uh, when it came to um, David doing his video where you're basically in a Catholic church, if you really think about it. You don't necessarily have to have the statues and everything like that, but you pretty much got the doctrine. Um, and that's exactly where it came from. And all they do is just kind of water it down a little bit to make it look nice, you know, and uh, Christianity type of thing. 
Um, so yeah, I'm very much against uh, institutional church, institutional fake churches, um, because it's not the church. The church is the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is, um, it's all the believers as one in Christ. And sometimes I think that people think that, well, I shouldn't say this. I, let me put it this way. Growing up, I was told that we had to go to church. If you were a believer, you went to church. If you didn't go to church, then you were straying away from the Lord. Um, and you could be in outer darkness if you didn't. So, um, the carrot and stick, you know. Um, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that are deceived by this manipulation and indoctrination that basically started from the freaking Catholic Church. And again, they just kind of broke off from the Catholic Church and made their own type of doctrines, but just kind of watered it down, but still is basically the mother of it all, is the teaching of the Catholic Church. And David pointed this out in his video, and um, it's funny because growing up, I kind of felt like that. I went to a, a Christian private school, and um, we learned all the different types of religions, and, you know, Mormonism, Catholicism, um, Jehovah Witness, um, you know, all the, all the big ones and everything. And they would, you know, put down the, the way that they believed. But then when you came back to supposedly the doctrine of Christ, it sounded all the same like the rest of them. Get to work. And that, and that, always, that always bothered me because it wasn't what I saw. But yet I was so indoctrinated growing up that I believed it and I was afraid to even question it because if you question, um, you know, say a pastor or an elder, um, you get basically chastised for it. You know, who are you? I'm an elder. I'm this, I'm that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I'm Paul, I'm a Paul, I'm a Zebus. Um, you know, uh, don't, you know, don't question me. How dare you? Um, and so it, you kind of go back into a little shell and try and figure it out on your own, which obviously doesn't work. Um, and through the indoctrination, you get, told that if you don't do this, then this is going to happen. If you, um, you know, again, it's the carrot and stick and it's, it's ridiculous. And I hate the way that Christianity is, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sorry for those who, who are new to my channel. I sometimes have a hard time finding my words because of my MS and because of my, my squirrels, my brain. I call them squirrels um, because they're constantly running, but yet they can't figure out which way to go. Um, so <laughs> either that or I call them burnt scrambled eggs. But it's like the, the, the stigmatism. I guess that's the best way to put it. Everything that represents supposedly represents Christianity today is not what it was back in Paul's days you know the 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 real understanding of faith and the gospel and um how to live the Christian life um it it's all religion is basically and religion is man made you know it is not uh, the doctrine of Christ. So, okay, that's what my little rambling was. <laughs> Sorry, but I just had to share that because it is something that is really uh, 
an issue today. You know, the stigmatism that, that, that we get. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a Christian. Okay, so you're like one of those, you know. And then you also have the ones, you know, within the church that like to, like, um, you know, love bombing. And I think uh, Colleen did a post on that, I think it was yesterday, um, about how the, and, and it's funny because I used to, I used to say this too, and I, and and I guess, I don't, did I actually put down, oh no, YouTube wouldn't let me. Well, what I was trying to say in this post that I was trying to put up for saying I was going to do a video about this was that, um, uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, oh Lord, help me. Um, I was... I was saying that the the love bombing that happens in churches and stuff is ridiculous also, you know, um, and you don't really fit in unless you're like part of that group. It's almost like a click. I never felt comfortable in, 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 um, institutional church ever. I mean, some people like it. Some people have, you know, fellowship there and everything. And great, you know, more power to you. Fine. But I guarantee you, once you start getting free in, um, in Christ and seeing that it is not all the carrot and stick uh, way of living and, um, you know, learning to uh, rest in his assurance, you will find opposition. You will find resistance. I guarantee it. I can say that full heartedly and with um, zero doubt. And that's the Lord saying, come outside. You know, um, the verse that talks about coming outside of the church or coming outside the camp or something like that. You know, suffer outside the camp. And I guarantee you, once you do that, it'll be kind of weird at first, but you'll be a lot happier and you will rest a lot more um, daily. You won't be under the stress of, uh, you know, the carrot and stick and, and uh, just that way of living, you know, and trying to keep an image. Um, I grew up with that. Oh man. And it was horrible. It's, it, it's, it's hard for a kid who's, not only, you know, looked at as weird because of uh, things that happened in her childhood uh, and very low self-confidence um, of herself. And so don't make friends very well. Um, and just kind of really observant around looking at how people are so fake, including your your own family. And it just makes you sick to your stomach. Even thinking about it makes me sick to my stomach. It, it was such a, a, a mask for everybody. Um, everybody was wearing nothing but a mask. And it was just, it was horrible. I hated it. So, and I actually still kept forcing myself to go because I thought that that's what I had to do. Just like the whole 10%, um, tithing 10% is not a uh, doctrine. It is not, a, yes, it's in the Old Testament, and I, don't ask me where because I have no idea. Um, I just know it's in there because I have read it and I have heard it, and I've heard other people talk about it too. And I'm terrible at trying to remember verses, so sorry. Um, but it is not required. The Lord wants us to give with a cheerful heart, not put us in debt, not put us in a bond in bondage and um, fear of not, you know, receiving the blessing if you don't. Um, no, we're already fully blessed. We are complete in Christ. We are crucified with him. We are complete with him uh, or in him, excuse me. We have put him on 
and there is no burden on us whatsoever. Zero. So if you're still stuck in an institutional church, do not let them put that burden on you because it is not yours to take. Because I did this for many, many years and I put myself in a lot of bad situations financially because of being burdened by the church to give or help out or else I was not trusting God and I was not going to receive the blessing if I didn't just, you know, do it on a, on a whim, like, um, You know, and they would quote, uh, uh, what was, I can't remember the verse exactly, but somewhere in the, in the, um, in Matthew, I think it was, um, you know, I can't remember what it is. Something like give everything or something like that. If if you don't give everything, then I just basically the whole carrot and stick thing. I, I can't remember exactly what verse it is. I'm sorry. Again, <clears throat> um, but it's all a farce. It's it's, and and this is this goes back to history as well. When you had um, you know, uh, the Knights Templar, and they would basically, <sighs> you would pay for basically today, you pay for your sins to a priest. Okay, um. Or, I mean, they were making money hand over fist back then. And it's continued even today. And again, the the um, the watered down version is in the church, the institutional fake churches today. And yeah, I get a little passionate about this because I really hate seeing people taken advantage of like this because I was one of them. And it just really pisses me off now that this is the norm to most people because it used to be the norm to me. But once you come outside that camp and you see that it is not what it seems to be and it is all by faith and nothing but faith, his infinite grace, nothing but grace, you breathe again. (laughs) It's the best way that I can say it. I even had... um, and I know a lot of you already know this, but um, for those, uh, I, like, I've gotten uh, about 100 subs new. Thank you very much. I have all glory to God. Um, I looked on my page, I think it was about, I don't know, a couple months ago or something like that. And I had like maybe six. And now all of a sudden I looked at it and I have eight. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, and all I'm doing is just, you know, reading, uh, uh, reading uh, David's books that, that are um, available on his website. And um, just enjoying the feast. I, I, I love them. I love reading them. And it's a, a blessing to um, to do it. And so I enjoy it. And I know that y'all enjoy it too. Because you tell me you do. <laughs> so praise God. Um, where was I going with this? <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> um <laughs> crap. <laughs> oh, I hate this. I hate my brain. It just kind of goes all over the place. I swear sometimes menopause brings ADD <laughs> sometimes. I think I don't know. I could be wrong, but anyway, it's just kind of funny. Um I yeah, I can't remember what I was talking about. Wow, that's bad. Um, so, okay, I'm going to shut up and just go ahead. Oh, yes, I know. Now I remember. Um, when I, so some of people know, know this and, uh, my new subs, I'm sure don't. Um, I lost my 18 month old son about 21 years ago. Yeah. Just a couple days ago. It was 21 years ago. Um, he drowned in a pool. Um, I was at work and I got the call at work and my ex-husband was there was, or was, um, was, uh, at home. It, it, it was just a very, very, uh, weird situation, but
but to make a long story short, I went to the hospital two hours. I had to drive. Uh, somebody had to drive me because I was not in a good state to even drive, obviously. Um, and he was life lighted and this was down in Florida and, um, he was life lighted to, uh, uh, St. Petersburg and our pastor at the time came up there and we were talking and everything and doctor finally came in and said, you know, there's, there's no hope. Um, you can either, you know, keep him on a, on a, on a breathing tube and, um, uh, let, you know, go from there and see what happens. Well, my husband, my ex-husband at, uh, at the time was, um, we were both in agreement that we didn't want to see him suffer anymore. And so we let him go. And, um, <laughs> text message. Right. Text message. Hang on a second here. Let's turn this off. Um, we want, we, we decided that we were just going to let him go and, you know, be with the Lord. And my pastor at that time put his arm around me and basically said, I guess you didn't have enough faith to save him. Do you know what that does to not only a mother, but a human, just somebody who believed in the simple gospel of nothing but the blood deep down inside, regardless of how much crap she went through with the church. And fear and still being in fear and condemnation and everything like that for a and and really rely on all these pastors for your spiritual guidance and have a pastor the main pastor say that to you your heart just sinks it's like you just you just want to die and that's pretty much what I wanted to do and I went through many attempts to do it because I didn't want to live anymore once I lost my son. I mean, I struggled through, I, I, I've struggled with suicide ever since my, ever since my childhood. Um, but that was a very, very low time, not only spiritually for me, but just life in general, you know? And that's when I left. And I never looked back. And you know what? It was the best thing that ever happened. I'm not talking about losing my son was the best thing. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the, the experience of that man, supposedly a man of God, a leader, saying that to somebody, especially a mother who just lost her kid, her only kid, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, not my only kid, I have one older one, I forgot about the old one, ha, <laughs> yeah, see, brain, squirrels, sorry, um, just, just, a, it's just, it's messed up, it, that's just very, 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 very messed up, and that was my journey, that started basically my journey to the Lord bringing me into rest and freedom from the institutional church. And it took many years. It really did. I, for a while, I, I just, I just completely said, I'm done. I basically said, and I'm not kidding. I am seriously not kidding. I basically said, F you, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't care what happens to me. If I go to heaven or hell, I did not care. I was that far gone when it came to uh, any kind of 
religion. I knew God was real. I knew he existed. I knew I was saved because I believed at what well, that time, uh, you know, it was way back in my, in my, uh, uh, adolescent years, but I still believed. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, the Lord's always used music, uh, to, to minister me, minister to me, his grace and just the comforts of his love and his, um, acceptance, even though I wasn't getting it from the church <laughs> or what I thought was, you know, the church. Um, and I would use, I, I used to, uh, in high school, I would saddle my horse up and we lived up in, um, I lived in San Diego. I grew up in San Diego and, um, up in Hamul, we, we lived up, uh, in the, the mountains and we had two ranches up there and I would come home. If I had a bad day from school, I would come home and I would saddle up my horse and I'd have my Walkman <laughs> and, you know, uh, clip to my clipped my belt and I would take my horse Busby and we would just go running off and I would just cry out to the Lord. And I would just, I, I literally would just listen to my music and just feel his love and his comfort. And it was the only time that I ever really, really felt close to the Lord because it sure as hell wasn't in church. <laughs> to me, it was just a facade every time I had, and I was forced to go. I, I had, I had no choice. Um, and I basically forced myself to go because I was so indoctrinated all these years and everything. And so I felt like I had to go as a, as an adult. But then when I lost my son, it was just like, that's it. I'm done. But when I was talking about music, um, when, when I really understood what the blood represented and it was just so simple. <laughs> and that's what I love about the gospel. It is so simple. And he made it so simple. And everybody wants to complicate it so much and add to it or take away from it. And, you know, disqualify people because they think that they don't, that that person isn't accepted because they're not doing this or not doing that. And pastors do that. And that's why they're nothing but pulpit puppets. You know, denominations. I don't even care. I don't care if you're non-denominational. That, that means nothing nowadays. You know, it all goes back to the freaking Catholic Church. It's all the same damn doctrine. And it sucks. And it's put a lot of people in bondage. And it's kept a lot of people in bondage. But thank God for our Savior who set the captives free. And when you truly see Christ, he will show you the truth. He will show you exactly who he is. Because I remember getting down on my knees and I said, God, I don't want anything else but the truth. I don't want any crap from anybody. I don't want anything extra. I don't want anything taken away. I want to know you and nothing but you. And he led me, as a matter of fact, to David Benjamin's channel. When I said I wanted to know who I was in you or who I was to you and who I am uh, or um, uh, who you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he led me to, to, uh, to, to David's channel. And I really didn't know much about YouTube. I really had no clue. Um, and he led me to his channel and it was a video about our identity in Christ. And that video, I remember listening to it and I was just in tears, but yet it was tears of joy. It was tears of joy because it was under, so understanding and simple who I was, my identity in Christ. 
that I'd never heard before. You know, you don't hear that in church, in the church buildings. No, you hear about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Proverbs. You know, I'm not saying that those are, that, that that's not part of the, the whole Bible is, it is about the gospel. Okay. But like David says, you know, like for instance with James, okay. James is not how we live the Christian life. And believe me, I lived James for many, many years and it was miserable because I didn't know any better. And not to mention, I didn't know the history behind James, the book of James, which is fascinating to me and just eye-opening with the understanding of how it was back then in the church and how there was confusion and how it had to be, um, it had to be, uh, um, explained through, uh, the history of the church, the early church and the trials and everything that they had to go through as well. And the fact that when James was written, the Acts 12, or excuse me, the Acts uh, 15 and 21 conference had not, uh, had, um, not been, uh, hadn't happened yet. So James was basically ignorant of the scriptures, of, of, of the understanding of grace through faith alone. Um, and I refer you to David's uh, playlist on, on his channel for that, because like I said, I'm not a teacher or anything like that, but it's just, it, once you understand it, it is something that is awesome to share because it really does help set a lot of people free from uh, bondage and from um, uh, just condemnation of trying to live the Christian life through the book of James, that the church constantly pushes on you, constantly, the fake church the institutional fake churches constantly push on you because it was all through my childhood, all through, um, every time I even stepped foot, it was always James, 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 you know, but if you don't have the understanding of the doctrine of, or, or the, um, um, uh, the history of James and the, the time of when it was written and, why and the fact that paul had not written um uh his books and he had not uh, james had not been uh introduced to what christ himself who chose paul to be the apostle to the gentiles um the way to live the christian life was through the teachings of paul and one of my one of my, um, my favorite verses is, uh, Galatians 2, um, 19 through 21. That's how we live the Christian life. I, through the law, died to the law so that I may live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. And I can never remember the rest of it. <laughs> it's my favorite verse, but I can never remember it. Um, yeah, my dementia is getting bad. Um, Let's see, I through the law, die to the law, so that I may live unto God. Um, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Or live, yeah. Nevertheless, I live. I can't remember if it's in this flesh or if it's not. Or but yet not I, but Christ who lives in me, and the life I live, uh, in the or the life I live in this flesh or something like that. I know flesh is in there somewhere. Um. Was it life I live now in the, uh, in the flesh? I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. And that is something that the Catholic Church will never obviously understand the doctrine I'm talking about. Because it's the complete opposite of what Christ originally made it, you know through the teachings of Paul.
Anyway, I'm kind of getting off the rails here. Way off the rails. So anyway, um, I just, I meant to start with this, but I kind of got on to, got on to a rant. So I'll go ahead and read this. But I am going to put this in a playlist and I'll cut out everything <laughs> that I just said on the, uh, as far as my rant goes. And I'll just um, put this part here. So Sister Colleen is doing these scary verses. And um, it's verses that elders and, you know, uh, not, oh, I shouldn't say elders, um, uh, puppet puppets are using to scare babes in Christ. And I sometimes I don't even think they realize that they're doing it. Um, some of them. Most of them, I think it's just complete ignorance because they're babes themselves in Christ and don't understand the scriptures and are just resting their scriptures to their own destruction. And not only their destruction, but their destru destruction of their, who's listening to them. You know, people don't understand that th the way that churches are today, that is not how it was supposed to be. That is not how the Lord wants the body of Christ to operate one being one person being listened to. No, you know, Oh, um, what's the verse in uh, first John? Um, if, uh, we have, what is it? The testimony of man, the testimony of God is greater or something to that effect. You know, basically how we tell a, a, a brother or a sister, um, is either a, uh, uh, a true believe, uh, a true believer, or if they are a wolf in sheep's clothing, um, I like to call them uh, pigs with um, lipstick. Anyway, because most of them just are just wallowing in the pig slop, unfortunately, and they enjoy it, and they enjoy uh, making other people feel like crap and thinking that they're superior over them, and. Uh, dealt with a lot of people like that too and saying oh i had dreams about you and you know uh the lord gave me a dream about you and this is what you, just a bunch of crap <laughs> i don't want to go into detail about that because i did have that happen to me one time um and uh i was excommunicated out of the church but that's for another time which i'll probably forget anyway okay so um scary verses oh two Hebrews 3, 6. This is, a, this is a big one they like to use for, you know, you're going to be thrown out in our, out of darkness. Um, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, are we, if we hold fast to the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Many think this verse teaches that Christians who do not endure until the end will lose their salvation. Let's look at what Paul is saying in context here. Hebrews is Paul's teaching on the high priesthood of Christ and that by him we daily enter rest by his, excuse me, by his uh, shed blood beyond the, the veil. He was the one, he was the once for all sacrifice for sins. Amen. He is ex uh, exhorting the new Hebrew Christians in the church to not be tempted to go back to temple and Jewish law and sacrifice because that would be like trampling underfoot the blood of Christ, counting it as an unholy thing. Rather, they should learn to suffer outside the camp. That's kind of like what I was talking about. Um, with those who have faith in Christ alone, apart from works of the law. Amen. They should strive by faith to enter into his rest. Now, a lot of people think that that means, oh, okay, I got to work towards it. But you, when, when it says strive, it's, it's not a fleshly work, okay? It's basically renewing your mind and, and, and your identity in Christ and um, reminding, you know, yourself that you are a child of God you are an heir you are um fully blessed you are complete in Christ there is no burden on you the blood has cleansed you and all you need every day is your feet daily washed by the washing of the word if that makes sense did I say that right like word it right <laughs> you know basically we just need our feet washed and the washing of the word 
uh, cleanses that um, that dirt off our feet. You know, washes the feet off or washes the dirt off our feet that we get um, uh, dusty from basically every day, you know, from this evil world. So hopefully that made sense. Um, the first part of chapter three is speaking of God building a house, a dwelling place, his church. Amen. I wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than mischief move. Sorry, my cat was getting in the way. Stop it. Um, see, you made me lose my place, mischief. Where am I? Okay, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has builded the house has many honor than the house, or has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that build all things in God, and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of, of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his home or over his own house, whose house are we if we hold fast to the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? Amen. So one thing that I love about the word of God is that it will always, um, when you understand the context of it, and it's not taken out of context, and it's not taken to put a burden on anybody, um, if, 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 if there's a verse that is like condemning to us, reading three up and three down basically helps bring it into perspective of what Paul is trying to say. Or the author is trying to say, you know, which is basically Christ. Um, but, you know, through through these um, apostles. And sometimes it doesn't hit you right off the bat. You know, sometimes you have to, like, meditate on it a little bit. And then sometimes it'll just, like, click. And that's one thing I love about the word. And I've, I've learned that throughout the years. That it's like, okay, I don't quite understand this first. But I know that when I'm ready, the Lord will show me and he is always faithful to do that so praise god for that um he's never gonna leave you high and dry <laughs> in any case whatsoever um okay so now let's continue on to our other scary verse below verse 14 and tie this together wherefore as the holy ghost says today if you will hear his voice Harden not your hearts as in the prov provocation in the day of the temptation in the, in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they had not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into the rest." Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Amen. Now, in verse 19, it says, So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. I'd like to point out that the deceitfulness of sin is allowing sin to stain your conscience to the point that you won't come forward to God by faith in the blood. To believe that sin is once again your master and that it was the right to condemn you, or it has the right to condemn you. I'd like to point out here that Paul is referring to confidence in both of these scary verses. He is exhorting believers not to shrink back from the faith and go back to dead works. Resting in Christ, 
partaking of Christ, confidence and rejoicing because of a sense of blessing go hand in hand. Amen. He's not speaking about eternal salvation or losing salvation. He's speaking of abiding in Christ, who is our rest by faith, so as to be partakers of the good nourishment of the vine. An abode is a house. These are abiding verses. Amen. He uses the nation of Israel as an example, saying that those who entered rest did by or did so by faith alone. And those who did not enter thought they had to do it by their works. He called that unbelief. The promised land is used as a picture of God's rest, blessing, provision, inherit and inheritance. Just as the Israelites were allotted portion of the uh, of the land, were allotted yeah, allotted portion of the land, we will be allotted portions of our shared inheritance in Christ and we are given a foretaste of that even today. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. But only those who believe the gospel can enter into rest. And rest is presented as today, meaning it's a day by day thing. We need to come forward to our high priest by faith daily being washed in the water of the word to renew our minds to gospel truth so we can enjoy our daily rest in him his provision for us our enjoyment of him uh, verse 6 says hold fast to the rejoicing of the hope paul didn't want true jewish believers in the early church to be pressured by their peers to go back to temple and the old ways it was time for the new wine you can't put new wine into old wineskins they needed to be renew or excuse me they needed to needed to renew their minds so that they could hold fast to their confidence their rejoicing of the hope and we should do the same today amen um i thought this was really 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 good and uh i'm glad i got through it <laughs> um after my uh extra commentary there I'm going to go ahead and I guess just put this up all at once. I was going to separate it, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and put it up. Um, I pray this blessed you. And like I said, you can skip through the first part if you don't want to listen to me. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Um, I was just kind of sharing a little bit of a background of, you know, uh, why I'm basically against uh, institutional uh, fake churches and you just the indoctrination of, of institutional churches in general because it's very, very damaging and um, a lot of us have lived it and I'm one of them as well. So, and all I want to do is really see people get uh, not only saved, but just set free from the condemnation, the bondage, the shame, the guilt, the uh, just everything that Jezebel loves to attack us um, who are resting in Christ and ignoring the um, so-called narr the, the, the narrative that is um, being put out there that is not, not Christ at all. And um, those of us who are resting and um, outside the camp and we do suffer for Christ or do suffer with Christ because we're constantly getting hammered for it saying we're lazy license to sin blah 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 you know same old same old and the enemy has it's almost like the the enemy doesn't have new tactics they're the same old same old they're just wrapped in different paper you know um, made to look prettier uh, or sound prettier and it's a joke it's a total joke the gospel is simple it's the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures and it's God's testimony concerning his son that we speak and that is our life that is how we live the Christian life is 
by resting in that, resting in his assurance, resting in his confidence, boldly speaking um, when others are shrinking back and going back to temple, so to speak. So we just need to stand in the blood and majority of the time, seriously, it, not majority, it is. It's standing in weakness. It's, you know, I don't have any confidence. Um, like I said, I, I, I have zero self-esteem. The only reason why I can speak, even have any kind of words come out of my mouth, is because it's Christ. I'm not saying that it's not some of my, you know, flesh coming through too. But I know that what he wants to come out or what he wants to, to, uh, how do I say, um, what he wants people to hear will be heard. What is from, you know, my flesh will be cut off. So I'm not worried about, I used to be really worried about when I spoke and how I spoke and how stupid I sound and everything like that, which I know I do, but you know, I really don't care anymore. Um, in, in the middle somewhere, I know the Lord is, uh, is speaking because it's a a passion in, in me that I desperately want to share and hope and pray that, um, eyes will hear, or excuse me, ears will hear their shepherd's voice through, this broken down vessel. So, um, all glory to God. And, uh, I pray again, I pray, pray this blessed you. And I will be getting to, uh, my comments tomorrow. I haven't had a chance to, to look at them or anything. Cause I've just been so stinking busy today or not today, but, um, this week, uh, I was out last night. So I, um, uh, working last night. So I figured my husband's out right now. So I figured I'd take time to do a video. And yeah, I know it's almost an hour long, and uh, hopefully you made it through it. If you did, <laughs> more power to you. Um, I know some people can't uh, can't can't have a hard time listening to me and everything, and just kind of read the transcripts, which is perfectly fine. Good luck with that one, though, because sometimes they mess you up um, when you do try to talk. But you can put me on high speed too. <laughs> as I think a lot of people do and kind of get the gist of it in half the time. But anyway, um, I pray this bless you and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Bye.